Okay, so with the theory out of the way, let's dive into some examples. That's to me the fun part where you can actually apply the theory. So over here, I'm going to hide for just a moment GeoCross product explain, and now we can basically free flow to some Houdini examples. So GeoCross product examples. So the first example that I want to put together is basically the idea of scattering objects onto some kind of other object. So in our case, I'm going to make a grid over here, right? And I want to also uh, scatter some objects onto it. So let's take the pig's head and let's scatter this onto the geometry. So onto our grid, we can basically take our pig's head over here. I'm going to, well, we can, I suppose, maybe make it a little bit less uh, obvious, uh, less detailed. And I'm going to say copy two points. So before we want to do that, I'm also going to add a scatter operation to the grid so that we can basically, I don't know, maybe create something like 10 points and scatter this pig's head onto it. Uh, maybe 20 points, so it'll be a little bit more obvious. So here, Initially, all the pig sets are pointing to the same direction, right? But if we were to simply randomize the direction, right, uh, they can, are going to point in all kinds of uh, random directions. So if we say attribute randomize, right, we can modify the normal here. Let's modify the normal. Also, the normal is a direction, so we can change this to direction. And if we look at the different normals that are pointing out, we can kind of see that these normals are indeed pointing in all directions. So if we copy the pig's heads now, we can see, okay, they are randomly rotated. And the problem is, imagine that these are plants, right? Or any kind of statues or something like that. Then the problem is that currently sometimes the pig's heads are upside down and the roots of the plants would be sticking up into the air. So what we're ideally wanting to do is rotate them, right? But in relation to the surface normal. So unfortunately, this isn't really going to give us that. This is basically this uh, randomization over here is pointing up and down and all that. So we kind of want to flatten these vectors or come up with a way whereby the rotation of the uh, vector is not really happening uh, uh, you know, in completely random directions. Also note that by default, the pig's head is pointing in the Z direction over here, right? So this over here, um, it is, this is the Z axis. Um, I don't know if I have my origin gnomon displayed, so let's maybe turn that one on so you can kind of keep an eye on this. So here's my z-axis, here's my y-axis, and here's my x-axis. And so when we do our, uh, do our uh, you know, copy stamping, um, they will be aligning with the z-axis will be aligning with those normals. So let's now create those normals. So let's create a normal that is going to allow us to um, basically rotate these pig's head any way that we want. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is let's create maybe um, an initial direction vector, right? So we could kind of say, all right, let's create an initial vector here, three floats vector. I'm going to take the Z axis because that is the Z axis that we start with. So here if we were to say everything is currently aligned in the Z axis. Next, what I want to do is I want to do a rotation. So basically we could say, okay, I want to rotate this um, uh, around a certain axis. Now, which axis do we want to rotate this around? Well, it is going to be around the Y up axis, but what else later on the Y up, up axis is going to become? Well, it's going to become the surface normal. So we'll deal with that in just a moment. Okay, so next uh, we have some control here, angle and axis. How do we actually make use of that? Well, with the axis, we can specify that to the user, or for now we can say, okay, I want you to rotate around the Y axis later. We will replace that with the surface normal. For now, however, I also want to say here, angle, promote this parameter. We're creating a rotation matrix, and we'll apply that rotation matrix by simply multiplying it right here, we'll multiply our vector by that rotation matrix. Okay, cool. Lastly, since we are dealing with nice vectors, I want to normalize it so that you know our resulting vector is clean and normalized. The other thing to note is that this angle is coming in over here, angle, as radians. Now in the dot product video, we talked a little bit about what radians are, what degrees are, but simply because we as humans tend to you know deal with um, you know degrees a little bit more, we can basically say uh, radians to degrees or the other way around actually, degrees to radians, so that we can define um, our angle here instead of in radians, we can define it in degrees. And this will form a little um, 
the slider for me so that uh, I have control over the rotation. Now currently the default value is zero degrees, so there is no rotation taking place. But as soon as I basically go up here, we can kind of start to modify this and you can kind of see all my vectors are starting to rotate. So how does this, where does this come in with the cross product now? Well, in just a moment, we're going to basically create some random vectors and we're going to be able to do that not just on a flat grid, but on a sphere as well. But I kind of wanted to showcase this first so that we can kind of see, okay, how does a rotation vector work? And if we plug this into our um, sphere, pig's heads now, we can basically see as we modify our angle, all of our pig's heads are nicely rotating. So that's useful. So now let's say if I wanted to say, instead of using this, um, this vector, right? What if I were to say, okay, going and create a, a random value or a random vector um, and maybe use that one instead. So, well, we have over here a random value, right? So this randomized uh, vector, we could actually use this. And then we can say, what if we wanted to cross this, right? This random vector that we have over here. What if we wanted to cross this against um, the surface normal? So if we say here, let's bring in the normal, right? Which is basically, this is our random vector. If you remember here, this is our random vector. What if we cross this against one of our surface normals. Now currently, I don't really have a surface normal, but it is represented over here by the Y axis. So I could simply say, go grab the normal and cross it against over here, the Y axis. Oops, the normal against the Y axis. And so immediately when we do this, right, we can see now, right, that our resulting perpendicular vector is tangential to the surface. So here you can see that all of these vectors are basically flat against the surface, but they are still in a random direction. Well, that's pretty cool. So basically we can still use over here the surface normal for a rotation. And so now we have a random vector. Now, if we wanted to say, okay, everything that we've done before with our rotation, we can still apply that. But instead of using now our uh, direction in Y, we can use the result of our cross product. So my cross vector, uh, let's see if I could um, visualize these briefly because we still have these, right? We can do a bind export and we can say, well, this here represents the up vector. And so now we can see our local coordinate system. Then what else do we have? Well, actually uh, the vector that is incoming, right? Represents here our normal. Uh, unfortunately right now our normal is already used for a cross vector. So I'm going to set this to be a vector. I actually probably should set this to be a vector as well. Great. And so now we can kind of see uh, if we were to take the original normal, we are going to see the individual sort of local coordinate systems. Now, notice that these are currently not all necessarily 100%. Um, well, are they? They might be perpendicular. Let's see. Uh, actually, no. Here, for instance, is a good example. So we start with a normal that is going in a random direction. And then we have the y up vector, which is just going in the y vector direction. And notice that the angle between these two is much larger than 90 degrees, but that's fine. Why? Because they're basically not lining on top of each other. And remember that parallelogram, right? That is formed by the up vector and over here, the normal is still going to form a plane, almost like, imagine that this is forming a little triangle, right? And then the normal that is coming out of this, right? Out of this triangle is uh, that perpendicular vector. And that is our cross product. Now, it so happens to be that uh, this cross product vector will always lie on top of that plane, right? It will always lie on top of like, our plane over here, our big plane, I mean. Um, so that means that it will basically be then tangential to the surface. And this is quite cool because this will work for any kind of surface. So let's let's do this for just a moment. Let's uh, wire this back up. So the, the cross factor I'm going to shove in the normal again so that our pig's heads are nicely aligned. So here, shove this in the normal. I'm going to temporarily turn off my visualization and let's have a look at the pig's heads. So here, now we can see that they are randomly rotated, but none of them are actually, you know, pointing uh, upside down, right? So this is quite useful to be able to, uh, you know, like 
you rotate any kind of object on top of another object. Now in a moment, let's change the incoming grid from a grid to a sphere. And also the other thing I want to do is the rotation is currently not working, right? So the rotation, let's hook that up as well for just a moment. So if I were to say the axis of rotation here, this matrix that is currently being defined against the y-up vector, let's use instead of this z value, we're going to use our new sort of z value, which really is the result of our cross product. So let's use the result of the cross product shove it inside of this first multiply so that we're no longer using the y vector the z vector and instead use this multiplied normal after we have done our multiplication i still again want to do a normalize so that my vectors are clean and they're always of unit length when you do any operation it's a good idea to make sure that your output is normalized now immediately these guys updated right the, the pigs has updated and i can now modify them to rotate. I mean, they're all rotating the same amount, but overall it's pretty useful to be able to sort of control this if you've got something that needs to rotate around some other vector. Cool, so now next let's basically have a quick look, uh, maybe also not a bad idea to save this scene file, and also let's uh, do this on a sphere. So instead of doing it on a grid, let's do this on a sphere. So here I have a sphere, Let's make it into a polygon mesh, right? It's a little bit too small. Let's maybe scale it up a little bit so it's about the same size of the grid. Okay, next up, I know that when I have a grid and I scatter some points on there, that these points will inherit the attributes. Currently, there are no attributes with the exception of P, the point's position. Same thing is true for the sphere, right? But I actually want to compute the normal so that these points will inherit the normal because I need the normal to do my rotation and also my cross product calculation. So here you can set the normal. Uh, it's fine to compute it on the vertices as the scatter sub goes through. We basically will inherit over here. Well, I guess we should set it to the points level so it is computed to the points so that indeed the normal that is being computed on the polygons of the sphere is actually going to be uh, inherited by the scatter sum. Great, so now we have this. Now, this normal, we might want to save this somewhere or alternatively, we can create a new random value for every single one of these uh, normals. So I'll call this one n random. So this will be a random normal. Great, so with that random normal, we can kind of now dive back into our cross product and have a quick look. So the first thing that I want to do is let's bring in the random normal. So the normal here, right, is actually going to be sort of the equivalent of the y up axis, right? So basically, we do want to use that as part of our cross product. But I also need that random normal. So let's bring it in using a bind operation, bind random. So that's n random, there's my normal, it is going to be a vector, we're looking for a vector, and let's bring that in together with our uh, actual normal. So here, our actual normal, as it comes in, is going to be the original surface normal. So the surface normal is going to be uh, combined with this random normal. Now I don't, I haven't visualized that in the viewport, so let's briefly do that. I'm going to visualize over here and rand, and so we'll, well, we should see it in the viewport. So there is now a visualization for and rand, but I, instead of a color, I want to set this to a marker, and it shouldn't be text, it should be a vector. So here under vector, we can now visualize this in the viewport. So let's see it in the viewport, let's turn it on. And so again, we can kind of see those tiny little triangles that are basically being generated by these two axes. So every single one of these sort of triangles, right, forms a little plane. And you can kind of think about it that the cross vector is going to stick out of it. Now, if I also template my sphere, then you can kind of see, right, okay, there's my normal, there's my random vector. But the plane that is being defined by these two vectors, right, is basically always going to, the perpendicular to the plane at least, is always going to be tangential to this surface. And that is what we want to make use of. So now we can kind of say, what are all the attributes that we care about, all right? So here we have the cross product. We can keep the multiplication if we needed to. The rotation would need to be around our uh, surface normal. So instead of using this Y value, we don't really need the Y value anymore. 
what is our surface? Well, our surface normal is going to come in over here. We're going to plug that into the axis. Let's move this over a little bit. We don't really need the Z value anymore. We also don't really need the Y up value anymore. These were just initializers. Now we do want the up vector. So what is our up vector? Our up vector is going to be the one that is sticking out of the surface normal. So basically our initial normal here is going to be our up vector. Great. So now we have an up vector. We have our random value, which is going to be used against our incoming surface normal, which is our up vector. Cross those two together, normalize them. We can still make use of our uh, rotation matrix if we need to. We are now rotating around that surface normal, around that up vector, right? And then here, normalize the resulting value. Um, we can also still save the cross value if we wanted to visualize in the viewport. Um, and let's turn off maybe that random value just for a second so we can see the local coordinate systems. So now we can kind of see the normal, the new normal, right? And also, um, let's just turn off maybe the rotation, right? If I set the rotation to zero, they will actually line up with that cross product value. Okay, great. So now if we look at the fixed heads, they are basically all going to be aligned with the surface, right? So basically, so we can kind of see over here, all of these fixed heads are nicely aligned with the surf surface and are kind of sticking out randomly. If we start rotating now, right, we are basically able to rotate them around their surface normal. So that's pretty cool, right? So basically this is a nice use of the cross product. Alrighty, so now that we have these oriented pig's heads, we can do maybe um, another example, something maybe more for defining vortex forces or stuff like that. So that's quite fun as well. And we can do that with rigid body dynamics, or we could do that with particles as well, because the rigid body dynamics, especially if they're packed, they're basically a bunch of points and they're going to be particles anyway. So maybe let's build ourselves a custom velocity field using these uh, uh, cross product vectors. So how does that work? 